Hi, this is the fourth lecture in the basic science part of the orthopedic board. And in this lecture, we're going to speak about antibiotics. A good source that you can use is this book written by myself. Uh, before we start the exact mechanism of uh, uh, antibiotic uh, action, I'd like to uh, just quickly through an important concept that uh, commonly come in the exam, which is transcription and translation uh, steps of the uh, protein synthesis. Uh, so in order for a protein to be synthesized from the DNA, uh, it has to go through uh, two main steps, the transcription, which is conversion of the double strand uh, DNA into an RNA, and then this RNA will be converted to protein. Uh, this is the translation part. Um, so if you have a, a, an antibiotic that affect uh, the uh, uh, ribosomal RNA, it actually works in this stage here. Uh, so you know that this antibiotic uh, affects the ribosomal RNA. So in, in another word, it affects the translation process or uh, in another word, it affects the protein synthesis. Uh, so I, I just wanted to go through this quickly because it commonly come in the exam. You know that this antibiotic uh, is affecting uh, RNA, uh, but uh, globally, the affection of RNA means affection of the translation process, and uh, even more globally, it means affection of the protein synthesis. So this uh, table here summarizes uh, the mechanism of action of antibiotic. Uh, this table is from my book, uh, and um, it has uh, the mechanism of action of the commonly used antibiotic in orthopedics. Uh, we are going to go through uh, each one of them, and then in the next few slides after that, I'll have some pictures uh, for more explanation of the mechanism of actions of these antibiotic. So let's start with the first one, uh, the beta-lactam antibiotics like the penicillins and the cephalosporins. Uh, and these works on the cell wall. So uh, how do they do this? They inhibit the cell wall uh, by blocking uh, the transpeptidase enzyme. The transpeptidase enzyme, sometimes we call it uh, the penicillin binding protein, and this uh, uh, is responsible for the cross-linking. So when you inhibit this enzyme, you will not be able to be two cross-links of the polysaccharides uh, of the cell wall, resulting in failure of the cell wall. Uh, again, I'm going to show this in more details in the next uh, slides. Um, another antibiotic which works on the cell uh, wall is the vancomycin. Um, uh, the vancomycin works uh, a little bit different uh, mechanism. However, it still works on the cell wall. Uh, it prevents the addition of new cell wall uh, by inhibition of uh, transglycosylation and transpeptidation, uh, as we're going to see uh, in the next slide. Uh, so we have two antibiotics uh, that works on the cell wall, uh, the penicillins and the uh, beta, I mean the beta-lactam antibiotics and the vancomycin. We have two antibiotics that work on the cell membrane, uh, which are the daptomycin and the antifungal, uh, the amphotracin and the statin. Uh, this works on the cell membrane, uh, a little bit different mechanism. The daptomycin uh, creates holes causing rapid depolarization. We're going to see that uh, in some pictures. Uh, the amphotracin works uh, by increasing the permeability, uh, uh, leading to disruption of the integrity of the uh, cell membrane. So two antibiotics on the cell wall, the beta-lactam antibiotics and the vancomycin, two uh, antibiotics that works on the cell membrane, the daptomycin and the amphotracin. Um, we have few antibiotics that works on the protein synthesis, as we uh, said in the previous slide. Uh, they uh, work on the RNA. Uh, we have the 30 RNA and the 50 RNA. Uh, uh, we are going to show a picture, uh, see a show a picture for that. Uh, the only one which works on the 30 uh, subunit is the aminoglycoside, uh, and this will, in, uh, of course, when you inhibit the, uh, the RNA, the 30S subunit, you will inhibit uh, the uh, protein or, uh, in another word, inhibit the translation. So in the previous slide, we discussed the, um, the concept of the translation and the protein synthesis. So we have um, a few antibiotics uh, that are working on this step. Uh, the aminoglycoside um, is the only one which attaches to the uh, 30S subunit. There is another one which is called uh, chloramphenicol, but this is a uh, old antibiotics not used now, so uh, don't worry about it. Uh, the one that you should know attached to the 30S subunit is the aminoglycoside. Uh, you have three uh, antibiotics that uh, attach it to the 50S uh, 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 subunit. Uh, 
uh, the erythromycin, uh, macro, the macrolides, they're like the erythromycin and the azithromycin, and the uh, lincosamides, like the, the clindamycin, and or, uh, especially the clindamycin, this is a commonly used in orthopedic, uh, they bind to the 50S uh, ribosomal subunit, and we're going to uh, show a picture for this. The linozolide uh, uh, bind to a specific part of the uh, 50S, it's the part that is responsible for the uh, um, uh, formation of the 50S uh, over 30S uh, complex, which we call sometimes the 70S initiation complex. Uh, and again, we're going to show a picture for that. So uh, we have four antibiotic that works on the uh, ribosomal RNA, the, R, uh, uh, the RRNA, uh, aminoglycosides into the 30 subunits, and three into the 50 subunit, the linozolide, uh, which we sometimes call the Zyvex, uh, macrolides like the erythromycin, and uh, lincosamides like the clindamycin. Um, after that, uh, we, there is two uh, antibiotics that works on the uh, DNA and the RNA itself, the quinolones and the fluoroquinolones, and these inhibit the DNA uh, gyrase and topoisomerase. Basically, they inhibit the DNA replication. So uh, the quinolones works on the DNA gyrase and topoisomerase, meaning that they will inhibit the DNA replication. The rifampin, the one that we use for uh, suppression, uh, long-term suppression, or uh, classically used for the TB, it inhibits the DNA RNA polymerase, so it's formation of the RNA from the DNA. Um, so uh, these two antibiotics works on the DNA and the RNA formation. So again, we have two on the cell wall, two on the cell membrane, four on the ribosomal uh, uh, RNA, two on the uh, uh, DNA and the RNA. And then uh, we have a commonly used antibiotic, the uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, or what we uh, usually call Bactrim. Uh, it inhibits the folic acid metabolism. Uh, the metronidazole, this is again is the, um, the anaerobes, and uh, it, its mechanism of action is basically formation of oxygen, uh, oxygen radical, which is toxic to the anaerobe. So uh, this is a very useful table. Uh, it's from my book, and uh, it gives a uh, summary for the mechanism of action of all the antibiotics that are commonly used in uh, orthopedic. Uh, so as we said, there are two antibiotics which works on the cell uh, wall, uh, the vancomycin and the beta-lactam antibiotic. Uh, so the, uh, both of them works on the cell wall and uh, prevent uh, the uh, formation of the uh, cell wall. Uh, however, it's a little bit different mechanism in the vancomycin. The vancomycin will uh, b uh, bind to the D-alanine, D-alanine uh, ends, and this will prevent the transglycosylation uh, and transpeptidization uh, uh, of the uh, units of the cell wall. Um, so it will prevent the cross-linking uh, of the cell wall and the addition of new subunit. Uh, the beta-lactam antibiotic uh, also um, bind to the transpeptidase, but it bind to the transpeptidase active side. So the, uh, the vancomycin will uh, block this part here, will block the uh, D-alanine uh, 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 subunit. Uh, but the, mm, uh, the um, beta-lactam antibiotic will block the active site of the transpeptidase, um, again inhibiting uh, the cross-linking uh, uh, of the uh, cell wall subunit. Uh, so two antibiotics that works on the cell wall, the vancomycin and the beta-lactam uh, antibiotic. Uh, the beta-lactam antibiotic binds to the transpeptidase. Um, uh, uh, it's sometimes called the penicillin binding protein. Um, it, and it binds to the um, active site here of the uh, penicillin binding protein or the transpeptidase. This will inhibit the cross-linking and the cell wall synthesis. Uh, the vancomycin, uh, it binds to the D-alanine, D-alanine subunit, um, uh, the subunit that you can see it here. Um, it binds to the uh, subunit, and once you uh, bind to, to the subunits, you, uh, this inhibits the transglycosylation uh, and transpeptidation uh, between the subunits and addition of new subunits. Uh, on the cell membrane, we have two antibiotics that uh, work uh, on the cell membrane, the daptomycin. The daptomycin will work by causing hole into the cell membrane, causing rapid depolarization. Uh, the amphotericin, uh, uh, commonly used antifungal, uh, will inhibit to the ergosterol, will combine to the ergosterol uh, and uh, increase the uh, permeability of the cell membrane, uh, causing leakage of the um, uh, intracellular ions. Uh, so two antibiotics working on the cell membrane, the daptomycin, causing holes, and the amphotericin B uh, increasing the permeability. 
um, we have few antibiotics that works on the ribosome as we said in the uh, first uh, slide uh, that uh, the ribosome is part of the translation part of the protein synthesis so if you know that you have an antibiotic working on uh, a ribosome that means that it's working on the translation or it uh, globally works on the protein synthesis uh, the ribosome there we have the 30s subunit and the 50s subunits that combines to form the 50 over the 30 or the 70 uh, complex uh, we have a certain antibiotic that works here on the 30 subunits. Most important is the aminoglycoside and also the tetracycline. So the aminoglycoside is the most important uh, antibiotic in orthopedic that works here in the 30S subunit. Uh, on the 50 subunit, we have uh, three main antibiotics, uh, the macro lead, uh, like the erythromycin and the clindamycin, commonly used antibiotic. Uh, this work on this part of the 50S, which is called the, uh, uh, the exit tunnel. Uh, it basically uh, blocks uh, the polypeptide exit. Uh, the details are not important, uh, but you uh, just remember that the clindamycin and the erythromycin uh, works on the 50S uh, subunits. Also, the linezolid, the Zybox, work also on the 50 subunit but it works on that part of the 50 subunits that's responsible for the initiation of the 50 over 30 uh, ribosomal complex which is this complex here the 70s initiation complex the other name of it is the 50 over 30 um, complex uh, the linezolid works on the 50 subunit uh, on the part that is responsible for the initiation of this complex uh, so uh, we have few antibiotics that works on the uh, ribosome basically mean that they work uh, on uh, the translation uh, uh, process uh, of the uh, uh, protein synthesis. Uh, remember on the 30 subunit, the aminoglycosides, on the 50 subunits, the macrolid and the clindamycin, and also the um, uh, linezolid also works on the 50 subunit in that part uh, that is responsible for the initiation of the 50 over 30 uh, complex, which uh, we sometimes call the 70 initiation complex. Uh, this picture here summarizes uh, the, uh, what we said. We have antibiotics working on the wall, uh, uh, beta lactam antibiotics and the vancomycin on the membrane, daptomycin and uh, amphotracine uh, on the DNA and the RNA. Uh, on the RNA, uh, the rifambin by inhibiting the DNA dependent RNA polymerase. On the DNA replication, uh, the quinolones by inhibiting the uh, DNA gyrase. Um, and of course, on the protein synthesis, we have on the 30, uh, the aminoglycoside, on the 50, the clindamycin and the macrolid, and on the 50, uh, also the linozolid, which is uh, responsible uh, for the inhibition of the uh, 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 initiation of the 50 over 30 or the 70S uh, uh, initiation complex. Um, uh, I know that we went through a lot, um, this is the uh, table again here. Um, uh, this is uh, very important in your exam. Uh, the mechanism of action of the antibiotics is one of the questions uh, that commonly come. Uh, I think this table um, is very helpful. Uh, and the pictures that we saw before to explain, um, remember the cell wall uh, the, is the beta-lactam and the vancomycin, the cell membrane, daptomycin, and amphotracin. Uh, protein synthesis is uh, uh, aminoglycoside, linezolid, macrolid, and the clindamycin. Aminoglycosides on the 30 subunits, uh, macrolid and clindamycin on the 50 subunit, the linezolid on the 50 subunit, but in that part that is responsible for the initiation of the 70 subunit complex. Uh, two antibiotics on the um, DNA and the RNA, the uh, quinolones on the DNA gyrase, rifambin on the DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, remember the trimethoprim and the sulfamisoctazole on the folic acid metabolism, and the flagyl is for the oxygen radical. Uh, after discussing uh, the mechanism of action of the antibiotic, we're going to speak about a certain individual antibiotic. We'll start with the linezolid. Uh, 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 the brand name is the Zyvox. Uh, it's a member of the oxazolidone group of the antibiotic. We spoke about the mechanism of action. We spoke about uh, that it um, acts on the 50S subunit to prevent the formation of the 50 over 30 or what we call the 70S initiation complex. Uh, remember, uh, the linezolid is uh, effective against uh, MRSA. However, uh, important to remember, it has no effect 
effect on gram-negative bacteria. So uh, despite it is um, uh, used to treat M uh, MRSA, it has no effect on uh, uh, gram-negative bacteria. A uh, very important uh, thing that you need to know about linozolid, it has uh, some reversible uh, non-selective uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So it's, it has uh, some reversible non-selective monoamine oxidase inhibitor. So it can induce something called serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome is an uh, exaggerated uh, uh, autoimmune response uh, that um, patient will have headache, hypertension, uh, uh, sweating, uh, nausea, uh, dilated pupils, uh, tremors, and can go all the way to colonus. Um, when uh, can uh, the linozolid induce the serotonin if it's combined with other medication that increase the serotonin uh, level in the blood? The most important one I want you to know is the uh, SSRI, um, the group of medication uh, that um, used for the antidepression. Um, uh, so uh, uh, this increase, increases the serotonin uh, in the blood. So if it's combined with the linozolid, it can cause serotonin uh, syndrome. Uh, of course, there is other groups of medication that can cause uh, increased serotonin, uh, but the most important that I'd like you to know is the SSRI. Uh, so linozolid is a reversible non-selective monoamine oxidase inhibitor, so it can induce serotonin syndrome in which uh, you have uh, uh, exaggerated autoimmune response, you have headache, hypertension, uh, uh, dilated uh, uh, pupils, um, uh, tremors, and uh, clonus. Um, uh, the, um, uh, when, uh, this it's related to increase in the serotonin um, when combined with other medication uh, there is are um, uh, uh, groups of medication that increase the serotonin however um, uh, remember the SSRI or the selective uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitor so linezolid uh, it's part of the oxazolidone we spoke about the mechanism of action in the uh, first part of the slide it's used against MRSA remember it has no effect on gram negative remember it can in Induce serotonin syndrome if combined with other medication that increase the uh, uh, ser uh, serotonin. Uh, the most important among them is the SSRI or the selective uh, uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Uh, another important antibiotic. Uh, that you would like to speak is the vancomycin. Vancomycin is commonly used antibiotic in orthopedic. Uh, it's used in the cement spacer that we used in cases of joint infection. Uh, vancomycin is effective against uh, most strains of the MRSA. Um, there, there is something that I'd like to explain in the vancomycin, which is the peak and the trough. The peak uh, is, of course, the highest concentration. So the vancomycin peak is the blood concentration uh, one hour after the injection. So when you give the uh, vancomycin uh, injection, and you measure the antibiotic uh, one hour after that, this is the vancomycin peak. Uh, the vancomycin trough, or in general, uh, uh, the trough of any antibiotic, is the concentration uh, of that antibiotic just before the next dose. Uh, so the vancomycin trough is the blood concentration of the vancomycin just before the next dose. Uh, in cases of the vancomycin, you'd like to keep the, uh, the trough level uh, around 15 to 20 microgram per ml. Um, so why in the, um, it is imp more important the trough than the peak? Um, this is because the vancomycin uh, has something that is called time-dependent mechanism. So vancomycin is time-dependent mechanism, which means that the vancomycin has to reach a certain level for a certain amount of time. So it is not just reaching a level uh, to kill the bacteria. It has to ha reach um, that level for a certain amount of time. Um, and that's why you have to um, uh, maintain the vancomycin above a certain level. Uh, so that's why uh, you need to measure the trough and not the peak. Uh, so the trough uh, is more important um, in vancomycin because vancomycin is time dependent, time dependent. It has to be kept above certain level for certain time so that it can induce its action. It's not just reaching a level. No, it has to maintain that level uh, to, to do its action. Uh, and the um, way that you know that the antibiotic is maintaining that level is measuring the trough, which basically means measuring the lowest level of that medication because you measure it just just before you give the next dose. So remember, vancomycin is time dependent. Time dependent means it has to be kept above certain level for certain amount of time to induce its action. So that's why you need to know the lowest concentration, which is the trough. The trough is the um, concentration just before giving the next uh, dose. 
Uh, remember, vancomycin should be based on the creatinine clearance for patients who has any renal impairment. So vancomycin, commonly used in antibiotic, used in the uh, cement spacer. It's effective against most uh, uh, strains of the MRSA. It works against the cell wall, as we spoke before. Uh, the trough is the uh, concentration of the vancomycin just before the next dose. Um, uh, the trough is more important in cases of vancomycin. Why? Because it has time dependent, means it has to be maintained above certain level to, uh, to uh, uh, induce its uh, action. So it has to be kept above uh, that level uh, uh, for a certain period of time to maintain the action. So you have to measure uh, the trough and not the peak. A few information about antibiotics that uh, sometimes comes in the exam, bacitracin, uh, bacitracin the um, commonly used antibiotic is the irrigation. Remember, it's very poorly absorbed from the uh, intestinal tract. That's why it's not given oral. It's only used for topical, um, uh, including the uh, irrigation. Uh, bacitracin is bactericidal against uh, gram-positive bacteria, including uh, penicillinase-resistant uh, staphylococcus. Uh, fluoroquinolones, uh, um, remember, it can increase the instance of uh, tendinosis and it can be associated with uh, non-traumatic rupture of the Achilles tendon. So if you have patients on uh, quinolones and you started to develop tendinosis of the Achilles, um, the treatment stop the antibiotic and apply CAM boot um, uh, uh, to relax uh, the tendon. Also, um, uh, you can put a lift, like one, uh, one inch lift into the boot uh, to relax the Achilles tendon. And remember, tetracycline should not be given to uh, young children because it causes teeth discoloration. It's also deposited into the bone. I'd like to explain a few points about the MRSA or the mesicillin resistant staph aureus. Uh, this resistance ha ha happened due to genetic mutation of the bacteria. It's called the MECA gene. So what will the MECA gene do? It will change the penicillin binding protein, so it will have low affinity of the antibiotic. So if you go to the early slides in this lecture, we discussed the penicillin binding protein. We said that the transpeptidase is uh, known as penicillin binding protein. The antibiotic binds to the, um, uh, to the uh, penicillin binding protein and inhibit the cell wall. Um, so uh, the MIG gene will uh, um, cause a mutation of that penicillin binding protein. Uh, uh, it will be known as penicillin binding protein 2A. Uh, this new penicillin binding protein 2A has low affinity of the traditional antibiotics, so it will not be effective uh, against um, uh, the bacteria. Uh, there is something called the D-test or the inducible resistance for the clindamycin. I'm going to explain it in, in a simple manner um, because it sometimes comes in the exam and also it's important in the real life to understand what does it mean the inducible resistance to clindamycin. Um, uh, there is certain uh, bacteria uh, that are uh, sensitive uh, to the uh, clindamycin uh, when you test them in the uh, uh, sensitivity test. However, uh, in the body, they may not be sensitive. Uh, so how to, know, to do this? Uh, uh, there, uh, uh, there is two wells here. One has the clindamycin and one has the erythromycin. If the reaction to the clindamycin is round, that tells you that uh, this antibiotic is sensitive, is, I'm sorry, this bacteria is sensitive to the clindamycin and uh, there is good chance when you it in the body, it will be it will respond uh, to the clindamycin and the patient will improve. Um, if you have the clindamycin and the erythromycin here, and the response to the clindamycin is not round, it's uh, cut into uh, this part between the clindamycin and the erythromycin, so it looks like the letter D. Uh, this is called the D uh, uh, response or the inducible, it, it, it's inducible um, uh, um, resistance. Um, so this is a positive test, uh, and uh, this indicates that uh, the, despite that the um, bacteria here looks like as it's sensitive to the uh, clindamycin. Uh, uh, when you use it in vivo in the body, um, uh, uh, there is a chance of failure uh, and chance of resistance. Uh, this resistance is carried by plasmid uh, that alters the um, uh, um, board that the clindamycin and the erythromycin bind in the 50S subunit. If you go to the uh, first part of the lecture, uh, we said that both clindamycin and the erythromycin bind to the same part of the 50S. Um, so uh, there is certain um, uh, alteration mechanism of binding to uh, of this area that they both bind that may uh, cause uh, resistance to treatment. Uh, 
so um, quickly the D test um, if you have a response that is round around the clindamycin that tells you that this bacteria is sensitive and uh, when you use it in the body it um, there is a good chance that it will respond um, the D response in which you have here this part here is cut so that it looks like the letter D and um, it means uh, that uh, there was some uh, inducible resistance by the erythromycin and, and this indicates that uh, uh, when the medication is used in the body there is a chance of failure so it should not be used so this is called a a positive D test. Positive D test means that there is um, induced resistance to the clindamycin and it, it does not it should not be used. One quick word on the principles of the prophylactic antibiotic. Remember, uh, the most uh, effective measure to decrease surgical site infection is antibiotic administration within one hour of the uh, surgical incision. Uh, this is very important. It comes in the exam. Uh, frequently, what is the most important uh, method to decrease surgical site infection is um, a prophylactic antibiotic administrated within one hour of the surgical uh, incision. Uh, what is the commonly used antibiotic for prophylaxis? Uh, uh, cefazolin, this is a first generation, or a cefuroxim, this is a second generation uh, within one hour before the skin incision. Um, so we usually use cefazolin or cefuroxim, uh, first generation, the cefazolin, the cefuroxim is a second generation uh, within uh, one hour uh, of the skin incision. Um, if the patient has allergy, uh, you can use clindamycin, uh, 600 milligram, or you can use vancomycin, uh, 10 milligram per kilogram. Um, uh, patients, remember patients who has true sens uh, uh, sensitivity uh, to uh, penicillin, uh, they have about 10% uh, cross-reactivity with cephalosporins. Um, uh, so uh, quickly on the antibiotic prophylaxis, remember it's the most effective method to decrease surgical site infection if you give it within one hour of the uh, uh, surgical uh, incision. Uh, we usually use uh, cefazolin or cefuroxime. Um, if the patient has allergy, you can use clindamycin or vancomycin. Uh, remember penicillin uh, and uh, uh, cephalosporins has about 10% cross reactivity. Uh, thanks for listening to this uh, lecture and other lectures uh, of my channel for board review.